Hello everyone, this is the Frugal Engineer and I'm bringing you a short video today. I want to show you a really useful and simple API from Yahoo Finance. I really like finance and investing, so I thought it was a good idea to mix this financial topic with my other passion, which is programming. For those who don't know, Yahoo Finance is a webpage that has all type of financial news, stock information like prices, splits, dividends, press releases, financial reports, etc. Apart from all of that, Yahoo also exposes a really easy to use API that has a free tier up to 900 APA calls per month, but we will see that in a second. My idea is to use this API for future projects that I have in mind with Arduino. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss those videos. First things first, let's create an account. Just follow the link that I will provide in the description below. I just use my own Google account to create the account in Yahoo Finance. Then fill your name and the company name, of course, those can be fake for testing. Then you will be redirected to the main testing page. But first, when you try test the API, you will get redirected to the plan selection. As I said at the beginning of the video, just choose the free tier. 900 per month should be more than enough to test the APIs, and just keep in mind that you can always create secondary accounts if it's only for testing. After that, you will be redirected to the API test webpage, and uh, you can then proceed and test the API. Here you can see a screenshot with the results. The Yahoo Finance API offers a large range of APIs that we can use to test. The main one that we will be using on the rest of the demo is the Stock Info API. That what it will give us is it will return the all the asset information from that particular stock. In this case, we have Apple, and we get all the apologies. Let me test again, and we can get all the information from that particular stock. But we have, for example, another API to return the values between two different dates. Really useful if we want to build a, an application that will get an historical data. But you can check here, we have ton, ton, ton of APIs that will get the specific values for that stock or financial product. Just check it if, if you have the time. But for the rest of the demo, we'll just use this one, the stock information that is, is going to be the most useful for my future projects with Arduino. Let's test now the API in Postman. If you will be working with APIs, I would recommend to use Postman to test. It's free and it's a really useful tool. I won't get into much detail in this video. If you would like to see a full video tutorial on Postman, please leave it in the comments. As I said, we are going to be using a stocks API that will return the, the full financial JSON object of the stock. First, we just select the HTTP method, in this case it will be a post, here. Then in the two headers we set two parameters that we got from the Yahoo Finance API. This is the key and the host. By the way, I will change this a key before releasing the video. Finally, in the body, we select this type, URL, and code, and then we set the ticker symbol. In this case, is the Apple symbol. You can find the ticker of the company that you would like to get the values. Just look it on the internet. With all of this in place, we just click send. And after a few seconds, probably milliseconds, here we can see that it took half a second to get the response, we'll get the full JSON object. As you can see, we have quite a lot of fields. We won't be using all of those, but it's nice to have all of that information. As you can see, using Postman is really easy. That's why I recommend to install this tool if you will be testing a lot of APIs. Okay, so let's jump now with the last part of the video. That is how I build this CSR program to use the Yahoo API to get the values. It's a really simple code. Of course, I will leave all the code in the description below. Just follow the link to the Google Doc document. And of course, if you have any questions, please just reach me. The first thing that we can see is the really simple main class. But only half here is a hello world. Actually, I should have deleted it just because I create a new program. 
and then we have this um, the creation of the new Yahoo API class that we will see in a moment, and then how I call the method get stock JSON uh, async, uh, sending the ticker symbol that represents Apple. Next class is the stock JSON object, and I'm checking this now so I can uh, show you how I serialize tell it, sorry how I deserialize the values of the responses in a class. This is super useful because what it allows us to do is to get all the responses, all the fields from the JSON on a class that then we can reference all the fields. As you can see, uh, if you remember from the first part of the video, the JSON response is massive. We have a lot of different fields. So this is not necessary to do. We have only to use the fields that we will need. If we don't need, for example, ask price, we just uh, can avoid it, the creation here. But here, as you can see, uh, there is a lot of um, uh, elements uh, that will represent the individual fields on the uh, JSON. Won't get into much details here, However, I will also leave the link to a web page where you can check the, um, sorry, where you can build this type of classes just only by uh, posting the um, JSON object and automatically will give you this element uh, because obviously the JSON, if you remember from, from the JSON, it has a root element and then we have the data block and then the data block will have all of those all of those uh, fields. Again, this is not necessary. I'm just taking all the fields, but maybe if you were I, you only care about the date of the price and the price, you just only need those fields. Okay? So then finally I have the Yahoo a, a API class. Basically here I'm sending I'm setting the uh, key values so of course if you are going to do something more serious You will never store uh, this kind of information on the program. You will do it in a different way in a more safe way And then basically here what I'm doing is I am um, Executing the post methods and passing all the arguments that we saw in the postman uh, part of the demo we we what it's the most interesting part here is we deserialize the object the response that we are getting and we deserialize in that um, object that I just show you so all of that response all that massive response get get uh, serialized here in this value so now here this um, this um, instance of the class will contain all the fields of the response. Uh, so what well, you will see here when I execute is just I'm going to write the uh, current price that is one of the values that will be used for the Arduino project in the next videos and then I just write uh, I just write here in this um, in this file uh, all the objects so we can uh, check that everything went well this is not necessary it's just a really simple way of getting the file so what we need to do now is we execute the program and if everything went well, we then get here the price. I guess it's taking a little bit of time. Yep, yeah, but here we have. So the Apple, uh, the last, uh, the last price of the Apple stock was this number here. My program is also writing the response on a TXT file, where you will be able to see the JSON response. This step is 100% optional. It's just that I wanted to check how it looks. We will use this in future projects. I hope you liked this video. I thought it was idea to show how to use this simple Yahoo API. In my next video, we'll use the API to send information to the Arduino. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. I just started on YouTube and it will be a really good motivation to continue. Thank you so much. Until the next video.